Okay, so today we will be showing how to construct a 1920s style tube amplifier, including making the tubes for it. This was a really fun project and I think it turned out really good. So please enjoy. Okay, so we are going to start the construction by making the base stems for the two tubes. Here's an example right here. You can see it has copper leads coming out of the bottom to connect to the tube. And uh, those are spot welded with a tiny piece of nickel to a piece of tungsten wire that forms the actual hermetic seal. And then up here there is a piece of steel that welds to the tungsten that we connect to inside the tube. So let's just get started on making that. Okay, so we have our copper wires here, and we have our strip of nickel, and what we do is we just put this on the end like that, then we take our cutters, okay, so it's now time to weld on our tungsten wire that's going to make the actual seal in the glass. I'm using 0.24 millimeter tungsten wire. And I just polished that to a mere finish using 220 grit sandpaper. And we are just going to weld like a centimeter or so to each one of these and cut it off. Okay, so we're now going to make the top part that's going to go inside the tube. I have this piece of steel that I heated up in the flame to outgas it. I'm just going to... Okay, so we got these made. Now we're going to weld them on. But first we're going to just very gently crimp the ends. Just a little bit to put a little flat spot on there to make it easier to weld. Okay, so that's what the electrodes are going to look like. Now we can get started on actual glass work. We're going to have to make the flare that these pinch into. So we have our two flares, and now we have to expand the glass out 
such that we can fit our wires Now before we can seal these wires in the pinches we just made, we have to make a oxide codeine on the surface of the tungsten in order to create a hermetic seal in the glass. And to do that, we're just going to heat these in the torch on low heat. And then we're going to clean it off with a little bit of a flux remover. And then we're going to heat it up one more time just to drive off any remaining solvent. And I've had pretty good luck with that, uh, giving me the correct seal color. Okay, that's what it's going to look like. Now we just have to seal it in the glass.
Okay, I'll wait for that to cool and I'll take a look at the seal color. Okay, so I ended up making a few different seals. Here's one of them. I just have it in this tube filled with acetone because it gives us a bit of magnification so it can get a better look. And you can see right at the bottom right here we have the correct seal color. And uh, that would work. You only need a millimeter or two of uh, that correct uh, golden color of the tungsten to make a good seal, but it's really not ideal. We would really like to use that entire length of wire. So I gave it another shot and got this seal. See, that one's better. Use about half the tungsten. Uh, this one we use pretty much all of it. That one, these are about halfway up there. But, like, if you're able to, get the whole length. That's really, really what you want to aim for. Uh, having the seal that looks like this with the correct color going all the way, you can be 100% sure that that's not going to leak whatsoever. That having the text in this correct color is pretty much the best way to make sure that you have a, a good seal through the glass. Okay, so we're going to start constructing the tube elements now. Just going to cut these off. So this one on the end is going to be the plate, and I'm going to cut that short. This one is going to be one of the filament supports. This one's going to be the grid. This is going to be the other filament support. What we're going to do for the one in the middle is we're going to cut it off short. Just bend it over. And that's what the wire arrangement's going to look like. So now we're going to make the grids for these two tubes. And uh, that's going to be pretty much the only difference between these two tubes. Uh, this one's going to be a voltage amplifier. And for that, we're going to space the grid uh, closer together. That will give us a higher voltage gain, but less current will be able to flow through the tube because the grid itself, it, it restricts the flow of electrons. So if you have it closer together, uh, less electrons will be able to get through. Uh, this one's going to be the power amplifier, and uh, we just want a whole bunch of current to be able to flow through this. Uh, so we're going to space the grid wider apart for that. And for that I'm just going to take this copper wire and I'm just going to wind it around uh, this form right here and maybe do about like 10 or 11 turns or so. Okay, here are the finished grids. I went ahead and I crimped some nickel on the end there. And these are just going to weld on right there. For the plates, we're going to use this nickel sheet. And what we're going to do to connect it at the bottom here, we're going to cut off uh, 
strip on each side right here and just leave a little tab in the middle that we're going to bend around that connection right there so it will all be one piece. Okay, so we got this finished up, and before I weld it down there, I'm going to weld an extra piece of nickel at the top right here to attach the getter. This is going to be the support for the upper connection to the filament. To keep the filament under tension, we need to put a spring at the top, and we're going to use the 0.24 millimeter tungsten wire for that again. And we're just going to bend this into sort of a hook shape and weld a bit of that on the top to act as the spring. Okay, so this is almost done. Now we got to attach the filament. And for that, I'm using 0.11 millimeter tungsten wire. And I just have a little piece of nickel spot welded on the end. And we just got to fish this through and weld it on the bottom. Okay, so now we're going to make the getter. I'm going to use 20 gauge titanium wire. And I'm just going to wind three loops of it on here and weld each one. Okay, this one is done. Now we're going to make an envelope for it. Got to make the evacuation stem now.
Now we're going to attach the evacuation stem. Okay, so we gotta cut this to length now. This has gotta go in there like that. We have about half inch of extra glass at the bottom we have to get rid of. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna score this around and then we're going to heat up a piece of glass very hot and just press it right there where the crack is and hopefully the crack will propagate around and it will make us a relatively clean break. Okay, let's try to whack it. Okay. Not quite even, but uh, we can just nip that off with uh, some pliers and that will be fine. While we're at it, I'm going to take this off. Okay, let's try to give this a test fit. Okay, so it looks like we're hitting right there. So I'm going to take this to the grinder and I'm just going to knock a little bit of glass off there. Okay, so this fits in there nicely. So now we're just going to wash it off on some acetone and then heat it a little bit with the torch just to drive off the acetone vapor and then we should be ready to seal that in this. Let's give it a shot.
Okay, so we've got the tube on the pump, and I'm going to check it for leaks using the high voltage supply. We have no blue glow at all, and that tells us we have a good seal. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to heat this up with the torch to try to outgas it. And uh, once we've done that for a while, uh, we're going to hook the bombarder up to this to drive the plate to red heat to try to outgas that as well. Okay, so I have the tube hooked up to the tube tester, and I'm going to see if I'm able to get some life out of it. Yeah, it looks like we're getting some transconductance out of it. Okay, so we got the tube hooked up to the bombarder. Uh, that's this right here. This can supply 500 volts at up to 200 milliamps, but um, we'll probably only get about 25 through this tube, but that's still like about 12 watts or so. So we'll, we'll still get this plate uh, red hot, and that will hopefully drive out any gas trapped in it. So I'm gonna bring that up to 500 volts, and I'm going to bring up the filament voltage. Right now we're only getting about 10 milliamps through there. Okay, so we can see the plate is starting to glow red. We're passing about 25 milliamps through the tube, dissipating about 12 watts or so. And I'm just going to let it sit like this for a few minutes to try to get out as much gas as I can, and then slowly ramp it back down. Okay, so I got it hooked up to the tube tester again. Yeah, it looks like it's still working. So I'm just going to heat together a small amount with the induction heater just to drive out any last bits of gas that are trapped into it. We'll seal it off and then we'll heat together once again, once it's sealed.
Okay, let's test it. Okay, so I have the tube hooked up and let's see if it still works. Okay, that looks like it's working. So that's adjusting the plate voltage, the grid voltage, and this is adjusting the drive. So that seems to be working. Okay, let's finish the next one. Okay, so this is the starting point of the tube amp. So I'm going to build it on this piece of wood. Uh, I have this old uh, tin plated copper wire that I'm going to use for the connections. And uh, just going to use these uh, brass nails for the posts into the wood. And uh, all the components we need, we're just going to attach them to nails that are ha hammered in here. So I think I'm just going to start by uh, putting the strips down for the ground and the high voltage. By pulling the wire like this, we can get it completely straight without any kinks in it. Okay, so those are bent, and I'm just going to use that to get the pattern for the nails, and we're going to put these tubes on uh, last, because there's other stuff we got to nail on here, and I don't want to subject these to that vibration too much. Okay, so here's how it's mocked up right now. Um, I looked through my collection of dog bone resistors and I was able to pick out a few that I think will work for this. Uh, for the first stage, I'm going to use a 1.5 meg for the input resistor to the first grid to ground. And then I think I'm going to try to do a 130k plate resistor for the first tube. And then there's also going to be a choke in the plate circuit of this tube because I find that that increases volume a little bit. Then we're going to have a 435k resistor right here from the second grid to ground. And then we're using another one of those transformers as the output transformer for this. These have a primary resistance of about 700 ohms and then a secondary resistance of a few ohms. So I hope those will be an okay match for these tubes, but uh, that will be seen. So I think I'll just start by getting these uh, resistors soldered in there.
Okay, here it is so far. Have these three resistors installed. We also have the schematic right here. Here are those three resistors. And uh, change the wiring a little bit. Previously, I was going to wire these tubes in parallel, but I think it's going to be a better idea to wire them in series because it will uh, decrease the current required and we'll also be able to get away with just having one uh, variable resistor for their filament adjustment. I was able to find this old uh, filament rheostat. It will work pretty good. And uh, as far as these transformers go, uh, I'm going to use uh, these uh, doorbell transformers. This one right here is just going to act like a choke to give us a little bit more uh, audio volume on the first stage. And I'm going to use the second one as the audio output transformer. And uh, I can't bring myself to cut off the prongs right here, so we're just going to mount them on a few pieces of wood. Something like that. And uh, that should look halfway decent. Okay, here's how it looks so far. Unfortunately, the tube that was going to be in this position uh, got a pretty hard whack and it ended up uh, breaking the filament, so I had to put in a different tube that I already had. So that's a bit unfortunate. Uh, but now we're at the point where we have to get these leads soldered to these nails, and uh, at first I was just going to bend them around and solder them, but uh, that's actually going to be a pretty tough thing uh, to try to do and undo if I need to swap tubes in and out. So I have these little uh, pieces of brass shim and I'm going to cut a slot into them, uh, have a tiny hole in the middle, and uh, basically just slip them in the middle of each one of these nails and that will give me sort of a platform to solder to without having to bend the leads. And if I have to unsolder them, I can quickly just heat this up and pull it back up again. So I think I'm going to end up just pulling the nails out, sliding them underneath. That might end up being just as much trouble as cutting a slot 
in these. Okay, so this is how those turned out. I think they look pretty good. So the last thing to do is uh, get this control mounted. This is going to be the filament rheostat. And then after that, we can get the tube soldered in and start to test this thing. I thought you guys might want a quick look inside this very, very old rheostat. So I took the cover off, and it actually has uh, gearing in it. So here's the resist resistance wire right here, and then there's a little gear reduction to give you a fine control over that. Very, very complicated, kind of over-engineered, but pretty, pretty cool looking. So as you can see, this control is missing a lead. So we got to attach something to that. I think I'm going to cut off another small piece of brass for that. Okay, so we've got a brass strip right here, and we've drilled five holes through it, uh, such that when we solder this, uh, the solder is going to have support from both sides of the metal. There's our fixed control. Trying to figure out how to mount it. Either could take a piece of metal, bend it from here, bend it down at an angle, mount it like that, or I could do it with a piece of wood. Something like that. Main issue is going to be trying to have it stiff because it's going to be sort of cantilevered over here and you try to turn the knob and it could be really weak right here so that's going to be non-trivial to figure out. Okay so for mounting the Rio stat, I'm going to cut out a piece of brass for that. This is just a, a brass cover that would go on a door or something like that. And I think I'm just going to do something like this. I'm going to do a rough, rough shape like this. And... Once we cut it out, we'll make it all pretty. Okay, so I got a piece of paper, got a hollow brass tube that is sharpened at the end. Just going to punch a hole. And 
and I'm just going to bend the paper around the pot. And we're going to use that to make our center hole. Okay, so for screws, I got these. These are not ideal for wood because they have a fine pitch thread. So probably to get enough uh, grip, we might have to put a little super glue on these when we screw these in. But that, that should be fine. No one will know about that. So I'm just going to drill two pilot holes here and then drill them out larger for the screws. Okay, so we got one last thing we got to do. We've got to get our coupling caps in there. I have a bunch of these old, I think they're mica caps. They might be paper. I'm going to have to test them to see if they're leaky. Looking through uh, my old capacitors, I was initially going to go with these. Um, it actually turns out that these are paper on the inside. So like they're, they all test uh, super leaky. Um, I was able to find uh, these, uh, these nice mica caps. These are really, really overkill for this, uh, but they're one of the few old caps I have that's uh, not going to be leaky. So I was able to get two of those. I'll just put one of them here, one of them here, something like that. And uh, then we can finally call this done. Okay, we have got the tube amp hooked up. Here's how it looks all finished up. Have it hooked up to a speaker, just a crappy test speaker. The tube tester, which will give us our power. And for the signal source, I'm just using an AM radio right there.
Okay, let's see what it will do. So as you can see, it's not exactly hi-fi. I think that's due to uh, the, the mains transformers I'm using right here. Probably not optimized for audio in any way. Uh, also, if you're doing a single-ended uh, tube amplifier like this, you want a transformer that has a gap in the core. Otherwise, you can uh, get uh, saturation in the core and it will add distortion. So there is a, a number of things uh, against us here. But, you know, it sort of works, and that, that's good enough for me. Uh, pretty much completely scratch-built uh, tube amplifier. Kind of unique, so that's pretty cool. Thank you very much for watching.